Hi, Nisha. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Robin? Yeah, I'm well, thanks. Looking forward to our conversation about your career today. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, where do you work and what do you do? Um, so I would say I work at Microsoft here in the Bellevue office, uh, within Microsoft specifically in their computer vision team, which sits within the Azure hierarchy. Um, that's where I am right now. And are you working on general computer vision or do you focus in remote sensing? Or Unfortunately, no remote sensing um, yet. So it's general computer vision. Fantastic. And what kinds of problem domains do you work in? Uh, so it's more about serving um, general computer vision models for the client, and then they can take it from there. So we serve anything from your usual classification object detection to segmentation. Uh, and then we have a couple of uh, more niche things uh, that we are trying out. But it's generally... Um, providing computer vision as a service on the Azure platform. Um, so you can just log in. So every time you start a notebook on Azure, uh, if there is an inbuilt functionality to pull a model, um, let's say an object detection model, yeah, that's that's what my team is working on. Fantastic. So you're, you're primarily engineering focused in your day job. Right. Yes, that that's the current flavor. Although my title says flight scientist, and I've been told by my manager that there's going to be some science at some point. Uh, but for now, yep, yeah, uh, most of the days I'm writing code. Oh well, coding is yeah. fun, so I'm sure that's a really yeah. satisfying position. And mm -hmm. what kind what kind of technologies do you use in your day to day? Um, specifically, if I were to talk about machine learning. Um, Again, your usual suspects, PyTorch, um, all the open source libraries, then we have some in-house libraries. I code exclusively on Python. There's nothing else. I mean, we have some backend services written in C Sharp, but I haven't gotten there. Um, so my daily driver is Python. Um, I don't know if I'm missing something, uh, what kind of tech, tech stack. Um, yeah. I so think, yeah, that different. makes sense. So it's PyTorch. Yeah. Because that's basically yeah. a deep learning then, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PyTorch, yeah. and then we have some libraries from NVIDIA um, because they they have very good integration with PyTorch now, mostly on the inference side. Um, and yeah, this daily driver is Python and nothing else. That's cool. I'm sure there's some special challenges that come along with doing this at scale as well. I'm sure, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And is your background yeah. computer science? Oh, it's a it's a pretty interesting background. So I actually started in civil and environmental for my undergrad, um, and then I didn't know what I was doing, so I got into systems systems engineering, which is a bit of controls and mathematics uh, baked in. Um, then did a few things on my own, and for my PhD, I decided okay. By then, the the AI fear had caught on, so I thought okay, I want to do something with AI plus x so that x in my case happened to be just environmental science so i just completed the circle in my case uh but interestingly during my phd i got more and more interested in the ai part of things which my advisor hates he thinks that i drank the kool-aid but yeah it is what it is uh so yeah i i i naturally gravitated towards the ai part of things and i guess that's how i ended up at microsoft Right. Um, I, I remember, yeah, towards the end of my PhD, I was uh, exclusively working on uh, the actual method side of uh, AI and less application. That's a really interesting sort of arc from mm -hmm. environmental right. to AI. Right. Uh, I yeah. wonder how common that is. Uh, mm -hmm. And does having is having a PhD essential for what you do, or do you think you would? of being able to get to where you are without having a PhD? Um, so the honest answer is for my daily work, probably not. Um, but then it's just my personal opinion. I, I guess without the PhD stamp, you wouldn't probably get the interview. Uh, again, it's it's completely my opinion. Yeah, Yeah. so competitive, obviously, to, to get a job, exactly. particularly yeah. at a place yeah. like Microsoft. Uh, I'm right. sure that the, the candidates are very highly qualified. 
Um, yeah. And it, even something like mastering a tool, well, like PyTorch, right? There's not many places where you would get three years or four years to spend mastering mm-hmm. that skill. So um, it might yeah. it might yeah. not be a requirement in itself, but actually a means to generate the skills required for that role potentially. Maybe, maybe. Again, uh, I would say again, just from my personal experience, even though my daily job is engineering, there is some cognitive overload uh there in in terms of like you 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 still have to go and understand these models and these and then the papers behind them so let's say I, if i'm implementing model x and the model x has a very um unique transformer structure in it so i i should be able to you know connect those dots to ship that model i can't just wing it without the knowledge of these building blocks is how i see it yeah so it's it's, all, it's quite I guess almost like a research activity, and you know, to re-implement some of these solutions. Right, right, right. That, that I guess that's how the the manager describes it. That's why it's called applied science. So you're not exactly researcher in the academic sense of it, but you're also not just a software engineer. You're somewhere in between. Right. Um, that's yeah. a really a really interesting uh, sort of summary of of the position. It's a sort of Right, a new right. kind of role in a way, um, specific, I mm-hmm. guess, to you know data yeah. science potentially. And did you go mm-hmm. straight from the PhD to Microsoft, or were there other positions? Yes, between? yeah, straight from my PhD. I started at Microsoft last year, July. Um, so it's been what eight months now. Yeah, very nice. And yeah. I'm just curious, like, what's the what's the process like transitioning from academia into an organization? Like Microsoft, is there a learning curve or you know different aspects to the work you need to to get to grips with? Definitely. First and foremost, I guess just if you were to stick to programming, um, the way we program in academia is more of spaghetti code. Just make it work, make it work once and forget. Here, uh, there are millions of people relying on that code, so it goes through a very rigorous process of you know code checking. Um, just one up, one above you. So let's say if I'm level X, then X plus one will say something, X plus two will say something, then X plus will say something again. So it goes in through that agile software development cycle. Uh, so I had to learn all of that. I'm still learning. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, picking up the concepts. It's just, but in summary, it's just the way we code things um, is different. Like it has to be rigorous. Uh, we spent a lot of time writing tests. I had never written a unit test in my life uh, mm. during my PhD. I I just faintly knew oh, it's something that people who write fancy code have in their code base, but I don't know. I just I'm happy with my Jupyter notebook. Uh, yeah. So that is one transition that I had to make on the ground, and then there is other transition of how work happens in academia and and. Um, in Microsoft academia, you have a longer rope. You you work with this abstract idea. You sit with it for a couple of months. Then you think about it. You put it on the back burner. Bring it back. It goes on and on. Whereas in 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 Microsoft, if you have a project, so we uh, we have these planning cycles for every quarter. So if that project is being sanctioned for this quarter, then you have to have a tangible plan with solid deliverables by the end of it. Uh, so that's a, a change of mindset. Uh, I'm not trying to say somehow when I say it like this, it makes it sound like in academia we are all lazy. It's it's just a different way of working in academia, whereas here it's more goal driven. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, yeah, achieving something within you know a particular short window of time is quite different. Pretty from, short window. I've got three or four years and I need to achieve something, but I can achieve many things, isn't it? It's, requires right, right. much more of a, a structure to it in the in the short right. term right. yeah and it, it must be I, I think a common experience because many people from academia will not have you know written unit tests or had so mm-hmm. much review of their own code you know they've been focused right. on the novelty of the problem say mm-hmm. and they, they then have to master these other tools and mm-hmm. yeah one it's... one more thing i would just stick in here um beyond just beyond just the coding aspect there are these the way i define them as peripheral 
technologies, like how to deal with APIs and, uh, you know, how to do even a proper PR, PR as in pull request. We don't do all of these things, at least not in my lab, probably some software-driven lab uh, researchers might do. So all these small, small things. So the first couple of months, I almost felt dumb in my job. I was like, maybe I'm in the wrong place. Um, because the other person is saying this thing as if it's supposed to be the simplest thing in the world, and mm. I have no clue what they are talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely so, know that feeling as well. Um, yeah, it's almost like there should be an intermediate step. You graduated with your PhD, yes. you do yes. some kind of extra training, and now you're engineering ready. But obviously, that happens right. on the job, but probably yeah. With that's a slight that's more anxiety good. and sort of stress involved, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, and you're you're not sure if this is something that I can ask or if it's too simple to ask. So you're constantly battling those thoughts. But I guess that wears off after the first six months. If it does not, then probably you need to take a step back and mm. um, have a chat with someone. That mm. um, if you're still having these teething problems yeah actually one one thing that's come up in a couple of these conversations people got involved in open source you know either during mm-hmm. phd mm-hmm. or during work and they found actually that that exposure helped them to you know get up to speed with some of these other technologies I agree. That, was that a part I of agree. the picture for you i did not i i learned about this later in my phd um and if i could go back in time i would do exactly that um, mm. Just participate in open source projects just to get you up to speed on how to write professional code. Yeah. Uh, then so, the transition that I see right now, uh, the other day I was just looking at uh, a colleague's um, uh, GitHub repo. And during my PhD, I used to think this colleague writes beautiful code. Uh, but just in the eight months, the kind of accelerated learning I've had in terms of writing code. Now I was looking at the same repo and I thought, hmm, there are no unit tests. Mm. Uh, there are bugs all around. Uh, it's interesting, so actually, the- because I've often thought that maybe one of the reasons people don't open source more of, the, more of their own work is because they maybe fear some of that sort of scrutiny from people that maybe don't appreciate the environment they they work within maybe that is probably. the case for academics probably i've 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 definitely felt that anxiety that or maybe it's just a lack of time i've somehow written this mess of a code and it works i've written my manuscript it's under review let's just go to sleep now mm. uh, and we'll see and once the manuscript publishes you are on to something else and then that thing just remains uh, you know the mess it was the mm-hmm. best thing you do is just clean up, clean it up a bit, and then put it on GitHub. But rarely yeah. uh, we take the time to convert it into something more, uh, more than that. And actually, Microsoft as an organization is involved in quite a lot of, uh, I guess, open mm-hmm. source and activities with the, the mm-hmm. machine learning community in general. Uh, mm-hmm. Is that something that people like yourself have a chance to get involved in at Microsoft? I've heard, but so far I've not. Um, had a chance uh, yeah. to work on open source projects at Microsoft, but I've heard in in leadership meetings that they they do stress a lot on open source. Yeah, it's a really interesting yeah. relationship where somehow yeah. these big organizations become dependent yeah. on this open source community, which they have no real control over to some you know directly. Makes but there's yeah. yeah, definitely an interesting relationship developing there. Fantastic. Right. And in terms of what your your short term career goals are, are there what kind of paths do you see yourself potentially heading down? Uh I still do miss uh, working with satellite imagery. Uh for the longest part of my PhD, I was at NASA Ames. That's mm. where the satellite and AI connection was built. Mm. That's how I, I, you know, found out your community. Uh, so that itch is always there to somehow take my AI hammer and and you know stick it to something to do with environmental or sustainability. I these are mm-hmm. I know these are very abstract and weak terms, but that's all I have in my head. 
so the mm-hmm. the goal is always to gravitate towards that side but the short term goal would be to just become a better engineer uh, mm-hmm. even to build good products in the future even to solve real problems um you you need to have good um you know product building skills so in that sense i am being sort of greedy at microsoft so i am i'm trying to maximize my learning <laughs> and mm. okay how do we build these you know scalable products and then we'll see well, thank you so much for catching up today and sharing the insights to your career if people want to mm-hmm. follow follow your progress is linkedin the best platform yeah okay yeah. cool I'll post uh, the link in the show notes at the end. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much. And I'll see you another time. Yeah. Thanks, Robin. Bye.